Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're continuing our Kubernetes journey and we're going to be installing Longhorn so that we can have persistent storage within our Kubernetes cluster. Now this means that containers, pods, etc. can move around on different worker nodes and you don't have to worry about the underlying storage. That means if something was on one worker node, that node goes down, it could be replicated on the other node and then pick up the storage from your Longhorn instance. This is somewhat analogous to how we do bind mounts within Docker, but it's taking it to the next level, as Longhorn is designed to be highly available. So in order to do this, we're going to have to spin up yet more VMs. So I recommend you spin up three VMs, because you always want an odd number for high availability. That means that if one fails, we still have two replicas of our data. So we're going to hop into Proxmox, we're going to spin up three more VMs for Longhorn, and thankfully, I've got a script for you to make this deployment easy. But hey, this wouldn't be Jim's garage if I told you to run it. We're going to walk through the script and I'm going to show you some of the changes that I've made to it. And importantly, we've put some logic into the script so that we get Longhorn installed just on the three nodes that we're going to create today. Now, that's for the same reasons that we specified which ones we want as master nodes and which ones we want as worker. I'm going to make these three dedicated Longhorn nodes so we can begin to treat the cluster almost in isolation. And we don't want extra pressure being put on our storage nodes from containers being spun up. No, we just want these nodes only to look after our storage. So let's hop into Proxmox and let's kick this process off. So back over in Proxmox, you can see that I've still got my test cluster spun up here. So that's the three master nodes, the two worker nodes, and then my admin VM. So we're gonna go back to our cloud template and we're gonna create three new VMs. So I'm gonna hit clone. I'm gonna make sure that these are full clones and then I'm gonna follow the same naming convention. So I'm just gonna call this one test-longhorn-01 and then repeat that for each one. So I'm gonna clone this and hopefully that will spin up. Yep, that's fine. The important thing here is it defaults to three gigabytes. I probably should have been clearer on my past video. Now you can either change the template to make it larger, but I prefer to keep mine minimalist. But if you are gonna keep it minimalist, you do need to remember to go back into each one and then amend it to the size that you need. So for this example, as this is gonna be storage, I'm gonna be a little bit more generous and I'm gonna go into the hardware. I'm gonna click on the disk, disk action, and I'm gonna resize it. And I'm only gonna give it seven, so it should give it a maximum of about 10. But I recommend you use a higher number because I'm just using this as my test cluster for these videos. My actual cluster, I think I have something close to 250 gigs. So choose something that's gonna work for you and don't run out of space. I'm gonna replicate this now three times and I'll see you on the other side. So now those three virtual machines are complete here and I haven't started them yet, but you can see that I've changed each one to have over 10 gigs now. So there shouldn't be an issue with deploying K3S. Importantly, you'll now want to go back, copy your MAC address and put that for a static IP, either in a DHCP lease or just statically assigning it. Now that we have that done, we've got all the basics in place to start the deployment process. Do understand that you can resize a virtual machine once you've created it and even one of these here that I'm using. You simply need to stop the virtual machine. A reboot will not be sufficient. Stop it, resize it, and then start it. And it will dynamically use that available space. You won't need to go into things like parted and do it in the command line. When it boots up, you'll have all that available space. Another awesome feature of cloud images. Heading over to my GitHub, I've created another script for this deployment, but we'll walk through it now just to make sure that you understand. So in my last video, I mentioned that there's two primary ways to deploy things within Kubernetes. Those are with Helm, which we use for Rancher, and Manifest Files, which we've used for both Nginx and what we're gonna use now for Longhorn. Now, you could choose the Helm method, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just prefer to use the Manifest model because it's quicker to do. It's only one file. And we'll come onto that in a minute. So the script looks very similar to before, and I'm probably gonna merge these two in the future, but some people might not want to use Longhorn, so I've left it out. The reason I've chosen Longhorn is because it's created by Seuss, who make Rancher and K3S, and you would like to think that they play nicely together. But do note that there are millions of other options out there that you could use, and some of those are probably more commonly used within Enterprise. But back onto the script. 
So at the top, we've still got the master one IP specified. Now we're gonna need that because each time we join a new node, it needs to go back to one of the masters to get all of the details and the configuration files. So I've just used master one here. Next, probably quite obvious, are the IPs of the three new Longhorn virtual machines we've created. After that, again, I'm specifying the username because we're gonna to want to connect to these machines. I've chosen the F0 interface because we need to assign K3S to use an interface on these virtual machines. And then the VIP IP address as well, so it can communicate over that virtual IP address. All of that stuff is pretty much the same. And the only real difference is I've created a new array just with these storage machines for the loop that we're gonna go through in a minute. Now, the loop again is pretty similar except there's a key change here and that is in the k3s extra args now you'll notice that this is the same loop as we use for the agents not the master nodes we don't want these as master nodes and the only other bit that's changed is that i've added some labels now i've mentioned in previous videos about what labels are so there's things like taints and tolerations and labels now i want longhorn to target these three machines only so that's to help with things like disk pressure and also to make sure that we can more granularly control the amount of disk space that Longhorn has available to it. So when it deploys these nodes, it's going to tag them with the node label Longhorn equals true. That's it. Really straightforward. But we reap the benefits of that in the next section. So here I'm going to apply a manifest file, which I've also hosted on my GitHub. Now this is simply a copy and paste of the official one. However, there's a section within the YAML file called node selector. And I've uncommented that and I've told it to look for longhorn equals true. So that means when it deploys longhorn, it's gonna look for nodes that have longhorn equal true assigned to it. And it's gonna deploy longhorn only on those nodes. So if we hop over into that file I'm talking about, which is just here, and if we scroll down, we can see that on the three respective deployments, I think it's the management, the driver, and the UI, you can see that I've got here, that was a lot more scrolling than I thought, node selector, longhorn, true. So I've replicated this for the three pods that are gonna get deployed, and with any luck, it should only deploy these pods onto the VMs that we want it to. So that's the only change I've made to the official one. And this is gonna pull down version 1.5.1, which is the current latest version. So back into the script, let's have a look. Once we've applied this manifest file, we're gonna watch the pods. So we're simply gonna watch this deployment and just double check that everything's up and running. Once that's done, you're pretty much good to go. The next steps are just optional extras. So you can then launch Longhorn by using the Ranch UI. Conveniently, it's built into it, and you probably expect that given that Rancher and Longhorn are both made by Suze. But you can also put this through a load balancer, similar to how we did with Rancher and Nginx. Now, that's just going to run this command here, which you've seen before. And then we're just going to do some debugging at the end. So get nodes, get services, and get pods, just to make sure that everything is as expected. So to get this up and running, we're simply going to head back to our admin VM. We're going to copy this script and we should be good to go. So over on our admin VM, and don't forget to boot up the new VMs you just created so that they can go and pull those updates. We wanna create a new file. So I'm simply gonna do new file, and I'm gonna call this longhorn.sh. And within this file, I'm just gonna copy and paste what's on my GitHub. So copy and paste that in. Then we're gonna hit save, and we're just gonna make sure that this is executable. So right click, properties, and executable. So now we should be able to head into the terminal and get this script up and running. And do make sure again that your VMs are on and they're updated. So now we're on our VM, let's fire it up. So dot slash longhorn dot sh, and let's see what happens. So that's now installing K3S to those new machines. I'll see you on the other side of that. So now this has been running for a few minutes and most of those containers are downloaded as you can see here. Don't be alarmed if you see that there's an error image pool. Sometimes there's just a rate limit which limits the rate at which you can download. Just hold off and it should complete in no time. Let's jump into Rancher just to make sure that everything looks as though it should. So over in my Rancher, you can see things have been pretty busy. There's loads of things that have been pulled, different containers that have been started, all of those things. 
And if we check on one of our Longhorn nodes, we can see that there's a number of images that have been deployed here. So that all looks good. Also now, you might notice there's Longhorn on the left. That's a good sign. So let's click on Longhorn and we can go to the Longhorn Manager. So if we click on that, put your sunglasses on, unfortunately there's not a dark mode at the moment. But this is the dashboard for Longhorn. So here you can see that we've got pooled storage available of seven gigs across three nodes. Now, I did have more than that, but obviously downloading these images, bring it into the cluster, etc., will take up some of that space. So you can see that 14 gigs has been used by everything else. But if you click on the node, we can just see that we've only got three nodes available, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So that means for all of our storage, we just need to focus on the three Longhorn nodes. This is showing that zero is allocated, but four and a half gigs is already used, and that's just by the system. So that leaves us with about six, five and a half gigs left that we can use. Obviously on your machine, I recommend you go and give it more, but this is just for test purposes. Now that we've got that there, we can look at volumes and this should be blank. Yeah, we're not using anything. We haven't set up any recurring jobs and we don't have any backup jobs. The backup target is also empty because we haven't specified something off site. Now, typically you'd want to put something in here like your NAS. So that in a nutshell is up and running and we now have Longhorn. Congrats, you've now got Longhorn installed and we're ready to move on to the next video where we're gonna start taking advantage of this storage. So I hope you found that useful. You've now got a highly available deployment of Longhorn that is assigned specifically to your three nodes that you wanted. So this sets in place the building blocks for deploying our applications. So in the next video, we're gonna get onto deploying some applications. First of all, we're gonna deploy traffic and then we're gonna install something that requires some persistence. I haven't chosen that app yet, but I'll choose something that's suitable for it. What that'll mean is that app is distributed across all of these nodes and the storage should fail over should one of those nodes fail. We'll also come back into Longhorn once we've got something that's using it and I'll tell you how to configure it to use it, how to configure PVCs and all of that good stuff. If you want to read ahead, I do recommend it because some of the terminology will be useful to know up front. Good luck in setting this up. If you have any issues with the script, come and find me in Discord or drop a comment below. But if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. See you on the next one. Take care, everybody.